country, I'm not taking my clothes off. Sorry. <laughs> sport, sport. <laughs> Um, I think all of you who write will know that inspiration comes in amazingly peculiar places and at the most inopportune times. Um, and, you know, if you write poetry, it's kind of like, where does this come from? So I wrote this, um, it was, I was listening to somebody in Houston talking about Shakespeare and, and I, I suddenly got the inspiration for this poem, it's called Juliet's Sister. I did not die for love, I lived despite it. Each day a tomb in which the glory of his naked face rose like a beloved spectral sun, pin sharp and bristling with grief. Memories torment me with their misery, a tragic manuscript in which I was but a marginal note, insignificant and overlooked, whereas she blazed from each page like an impassioned torch overburdened with mystery and romance. A resplendent star unlocked from her tower of filial duty to ride, with unicorns, embracing the cruel enigma of love unconditionally, ready for sacrifice, crucified by it, yet lovely still as any poet's lasting accolade, so that the heart constricted, imagining those radiant eyes closed forever. She was the sun, brilliant and shining, forever at zenith strength, and he, Weak and foolish Montague was bedazzled by her luminosity, so that, stepping back into the unlit chamber of my presence, he became blind and unseeing. I was the moon to him, eclipsed, ignored, invisible, hidden beneath the layered clouds of fairy glamour her presence guaranteed. He did not even know my name, yet my eyes were just as blue. Not a sapphire stolen from the heavens and given life within her face, rather as lakes at midnight, too dark to be fathomable. My lips paid tribute to no rose, my breasts no fragrant garden where love could be screamed, my body no resting place, no dream within a dream. He was a boy who loved not wisely, but too well. I am mirror to his folly, unnoticed and intangible. Time passes. I take a step closer to oblivion, eternity's fulfilment close at hand, indulging imagination, basking in its fleeting warmth, my self-made memories replacing truth. I see them growing all together. She become fat and impatient with his boyishness. He, wearied of that impatience, finally seeing beyond the beauty and the legend, tired of passion, turning away from the madness of obsession, seeing me, at last, across another crowded room, smiling that aching smile. My heart fumbles in my breast, a flock of birds ready to burst free. I step forward into the light. Thank you. Um, and this one is it's it's um it's not autobiographical, but it was part of a series of poems that I wrote about the end of love and then the beginning of other stuff. And it's called The Study of Clouds. <coughs> Nephology, the study of clouds. Entomology, the study of insects. Dendrology, the study of trees and other woodland plants. The study of transforming seasons. The study of the healing heart. The study of the hopeful day. He touched my face and called me beautiful. Smiled his small, tired smile and I felt myself thaw from the burgeoning frost of middle-aged indifference. Acknowledged the study of that single breaking moment when all things had become a living possibility again. The recognition of molecular change in my blood's capacity for abundance. A continental shift of consciousness away from treachery. A spectral exorcism. The ghost of his mouth chiming on mine like a midnight clock. He led me into the probability of expectation once more, the dance of his body's percussion, descanting direction. He touched my face, called me beautiful. The study of the unlocked gateway, the study of the reclaimed kingdom, 
the study of the acquiescing spirit, philology, the study of the beloved word, cartology, the study of maps and changing dynasties, astrology, the study of star logic, alchemy, the study of transformation. Thank you.